Welcome to SOCAP 13. This is our sixth big global event, and it's our biggest ever. I can confidently say to all of you that this is our best ever. One thing that changed this game for us happened in a session last year uh, that the Amityar Network put on where they laid out the case that we should take a sectoral approach, look at sectors, to build out this market at the intersection of money and meaning. Uh, this is the social capital market, if you're new here. It's the space between giving and investing, where both sides learn to cooperate for greater impact than they could do when they were siloed. You know, back when they were siloed, people thought of the market as just a place where you make money, and philanthropy is just a place where you give some portion of the excess wealth created by the market to, a lot of times, fix the problems that the market caused. Back then, we could not imagine the kind of cooperation that we're starting to see in this space between giving and investing. And that cooperation becomes really clear when you look at a couple verticals like we are this year, health and the oceans. The health and the oceans theme just kind of arose last year at SOCAP after we'd heard the Amidiar talk. I was talking over a beer with Doug Judy, a population health uh, physician, and David Erickson, the of the San Francisco Fed, who's the leading thinker on holistic health and housing. And we said, kind of then and there, you know, that's a good idea. Let's do a health focus at SOCAP next year. And Rosalie, our producer, said she thought it was a good idea, so it happened. And putting it all together was our content producer, Liz Krieger, who's given us a, a greater focus across a wider spectrum than we've had before. But you can really see things when you do this sector focus. Uh, the health theme, which Doug curated, it wasn't just his idea, he actually did the work, it links major efforts by leaders in affordable housing with public health in new ways that could be the key to really eliminating widespread poverty in the US. A weird thing, up until about three years ago, people working in public health <coughs> and public housing and affordable housing couldn't talk to each other, even though they're working with people in the same apartments. Now they can, and they take a holistic approach that saves money and increases healthy communities. And a lot of times when you look at this sector approach, you find that you're guided by the top visionary foundations who found new ways to come together. And so in health, we're working with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Kresge and the Cal Endowment on that. And one of the things we're showing, that I, we're gonna be showing a lot of, there's a, a pitch session tomorrow, one of the things that's changed is because of Obamacare changing the rules and saying that the working poor now count in the actuarial tables that insurance companies use, you can make as much money helping the working poor get healthy, helping a grandmother from West Oakland or Jackson, Mississippi handle her chronic type 2 diabetes as you can focusing on affluent people from Pack Heights who work out at expensive gyms. So it's a huge investment opportunity where justice requires trying for top quartile venture technology capital returns to meet the opportunity for system change with cultural literacy as the competitive edge that impact funds will have against traditional venture. You'll hear a lot more about those ideas and more from Doug just a little later today. But most of the time, it's not like that with M Health and Obamacare. Most of the time, there is a cost of doing good when you're doing impact investing, and that's okay. Investing for impact, if impact is your goal, lowers the cost of doing good for philanthropy or increases the positive impact return for investors. It can positively return capital and do great good. And once in a while, you find a place where social good and market rate overlap, like with Obamacare and M Health. But if an impact fund is trying to sell you that you can do just as good and do just as well everywhere, they're lying to you, don't pay attention to them. The same sector approach extends to the oceans, where we're working with thought leaders like the Packard Foundation and the Moore Foundation, Bloomberg and Rockefeller Foundations, along with groups like Fish 2.0 and Future of Fish, to make the case that revitalizing the ocean can be seen as a market opportunity and not just a crisis that the scientists and the lawyers try to keep at bay. So we're finding broadly that SOCAP has a role in expanding on and highlighting the work of foundations, collaboratives, working with a sector focus. That's one of the things we discovered on the sector focus today, this year. Connecting organizations that are working together to make common cause beyond where each foundation's theory of change might keep them from having a holistic impact. 
That s session is led by, that whole Oceans track is led by Jeff Leifer, Cheryl Dahl, Carol, Carrie Hansen, and Monica Jane. And it's really an amazing story with a lot of facets that you can uh, dive into or just skim the surface of. You're going to have ocean jokes. We're also looking seriously the, for the first time at real efforts to bring impact investing to the public markets. That is the real deal. Local shows up in our community theme. And so we're looking at the makers and the gritty entrepreneurs and the civic leaders trying to revitalize a bankrupt place like Detroit. But we're also looking at social enterprises bringing planet-focused funders together with people-focused investors to do things like preserve coastal mangrove swamps and increase the livelihoods of local people so there's revitalization of critical ecological resources. This is a place where people investing in turtles and people investing in people can work together in new ways, and we're showing how that's starting to work. It's a new thing, and I think it's going to be really significant to replicate. Our community's theme is maybe the most interdisciplinary of them all throughout the conference. You can think of it like invest an investing tour during a social studies class, or you know, maybe it's a prototype for a new Epcot ride. But we think about the issues and topics we present at SOCAP a lot, and we talk to hundreds of people. But we don't know at all. So continuing and going even further than the open space session we've had for five years, which were community generated, this year we handed over a solid 20% of the content of the show to the people in the community. So the, the, the people in the SOCAP community submitted 300 sessions, and they got voted on and selected the sessions that are in the wildcard track. <clears throat> and there's some real gems there. There's things in the wildcard track that we would have never thought of. That you, that you brought together, the people who submitted the 300 uh, sessions and the 50 or so sessions that got, that got voted on as the highest votes. Through the leadership of the community and the wildcard track, we started approaching the corporates this year with some supply chain focused sessions. And I'm really even more excited by the potential to engage with the corporates in accelerating the good economy through collaborative commerce, the sharing economy, called a lot of different things. But it's creating a wholesale behavior change, and it's a new way to think about what's mine and what's ours and what we share that is maybe this movement's chance to really influence the mainstream while staying true to its roots in accelerating the flow of capital to good, to accelerating the good economy. I'm excited about the potential I sense there. We've got a great session on Friday that's not in your program books, Friday morning. It came together too late, but look for it on your sheets. I think it's got a lot of interesting potential. In terms of SOCAP, today is an easy day, not complicated. We have plenaries. Throughout the afternoon, the leaders of each theme, oceans, health, communities, impact investing, meaning, are going to come out and explain them to you, tell some stories that illustrate their ideas and what they want you to experience at SOCAP. Tomorrow, it's not as easy. It gets complicated. You have to choose whether to go to oceans or health or communities or the meaning track or impact investing. And you can feel free to wander across the sectors and silos, just get in a big picture field. Or you can go decide, I'm about the oceans today, and I want to go deep into that. Or I want to look at community. You, you can go back and forth deciding about that. But I think the twin lenses will help you see this thing we're doing a lot better than we've done it before. So it's your choice tomorrow. Go deep, go across, go some mix. Today is easy. We'll give you the perspective, and we have leaders who have worked a long time on each of the themes who will be explaining it. I'm going to hand it off now to my wife and SOCAP producer, Rosalie Harden, to explain the meaning theme. We've always called ourselves the conference at the intersection of money and meaning, and meaning is the glue that ties the whole SOCAP landscape together. So thank you. Welcome to SOCAP.